Hello and welcome to another video. This is the Elm Bathtub. It's a Wednesday evening for me and I'm off work this week so I'm putting my feet up with a glass of wine and just chilling out. But on a serious note I am reviewing another game for you. This one is called Colonize and it's the prologue of the game. Uh, full game not yet released. The prologue came out on the 25th of May this year so I thought I'd try it out for a couple of reasons. Um, one, the name of the game and the description of the game sounds like my cup of tea. And also, it looks very similar to another game I've reviewed called Patron. So we'll explore that in a bit more detail in just a moment. In terms of the options in the game, the settings are okay for a prologue game. There's a few graphic settings, um, volume settings, as you'd expect. Um, no real gameplay settings to choose from in terms of difficulty or anything like that. There is only one campaign to play from in the prologue that's the Plymouth campaign so you are the pilgrims who left Plymouth in the Mayflower you go over to America and you basically steal land off the Native American Indians and I think the point of this is you have to get on with them or choose not to get on with them perhaps um, depending on what you'd like to do the outcome is as follows based on that choice Colonize Prologue is a combination of survival game and building strategy that takes place during the colonization period of the 17th century. It tells the story of a settlement in the New World and all the difficulties encountered by the early settlers. This game has a potentially very controversial name, Colonize, and in the logo for the game, or the artwork for the, for the game, um, there is an English flag. Uh, the word colonize and an English flag can be deemed very offensive in this day and age, so you may have upset a few... Uh, pant wetters at some point so uh, good on you in that sense at least well done um, the game itself as I said a moment ago is a little bit like patron so the idea is you have a starting position with effectively nothing you have to make sure that your very small population can survive so you've got food you know you've got various resources and you have to keep those resources maintained to a decent enough level so your population can be happy enough and well enough and fed enough to survive. Um, your population will have children and those children will go on to become adults which you can use for the workforce. So literally exactly the same premise as Patron. It's a survival um, city building game which is a, a good fun genre in my view. I enjoy that. Um, it, I think it actually looks better than Patron on many levels. Um, the way that the people will interact in their workplace. So, for example, a hunter will go out hunting, um, a, a, a woodcutter will go out woodcutting, and the detail that, that that follows the animations of the people working on them is actually far better than Patron. So that's a winner for me. Um, the seasons, you've got the standard winter, summer thing. Winter looks good, as does Patron. But I think this just goes a little bit further. I think the lighting in this is a lot better. So for me that's a winner. I think the user interface is also better, much more uh, user friendly and uh, and looks cleaner as well in my view. I think considering this game is actually made by two developers, um, you've got to give them some credit because there is quite a lot of potential here. I quite like the idea of um, the colonization area of having to uh, move to a new, new world continent so to speak and then um, try and survive and live off the land and then potentially have confrontation with um, the natives that side of it is not in the game yet so there is no military aspect although I know that there will be at some point in the full version um, but there's yeah it's, it's it's a nice narrative for the game and they've done well I mean on the whole it it does work but there is of course a few things which I would definitely need to bring up the biggest one for me is the fact that you simply can't delete any buildings, demolish any buildings, remove any paths. It's really, really annoying. I built a couple of houses when I didn't want them and they were basically unneeded and I couldn't get rid of them and they were just built anyway and just like, I really don't want that there. It's an eyesore. It just didn't work out. Uh, just another thing as well. Um, there's a couple of other things too, but just moving on to the next point. There's a food situation. I found a lot of my citizens kept complaining they were really hungry and oh, they, they were losing their health and they would eventually uh, die or, or, or leave. Um, I think died in, in most cases, actually. I don't think they can actually leave. But anyway, um, I started losing citizens and there was plenty of food. My stores had plenty of food. I mean, they go and eat in the inn. There's only one place that they can get food, so it seems in the inn. The inn had plenty of food, but people were still starving. And my population was then disappearing, which was extremely frustrating. And I don't think I could have done anything about it because I had food. So 
mm, weren't too sure about that and it did kind of bug me a little bit uh, on the note of that um i i would say that building things which is ultimately required for food you have like a, a 24 hour clock so start of shift end of shift if you work people too hard say try and make them work a 23 24 hour day which of course is insane they will dive through um effectively exhaustion and bad health which you can understand so yes you make the time scales a bit more realistic so i make them work 10 11 12 hour days in the various buildings and then they don't die through things related to uh, workplace exhaustion, which is a bonus. However, the, nothing gets done. It just seems that everything is so slow to build. So the people who work in your warehouse who are responsible for distributing goods across um, your new buildings that need to be built and collecting materials from the structures that are functioning, it just takes so long. And the fast forward button is really slow. So the fastest um, setting just feels really slow so as you're going between i don't know say nine o'clock at night when you close all of your buildings down and six in the morning till they reopen it takes bloody ages and they don't seem to do much in the time that they're open so you might get i don't know a tenth of a building's materials delivered to the site within the time that they're operating it just seems extremely laborious so for me, I think the workers need to be more efficient. You can't increase their efficiency. There is no tech tree. There is no upgrades to buildings or anything like that. You can look at the individual people, which is actually a good improvement on, if I was to use the comparison to Patreon, which perhaps we shouldn't so much, but people will naturally, and other games like Banished, um, people will have certain skills. They get better at some things, which make them a bit quicker moving around the map. So there is that. But overall, I think the whole construction thing is very slow. And although I like the shift work thing, I think it is slightly flawed in the fact that nothing ever seems to get done. I like the way that you can look at a lot of detail about your citizens. You can see their names. You can see uh, a lot about them, um, which gives you good insights to maybe where best to place them for work. I like the way that you can choose where they work and as I said to you right at the beginning, the user interface is really, really good. It's quite intuitive. I just didn't bother with the tutorial and thought, well, I've played games like this before. And it's just easy to get stuck into. But as I say, there are those those few flaws. But apart from that, this is, considering it's two people working on it, I think the recent reviews being mixed in Steam might be slightly harsh. It's not complete. And I played two hours of it, and I think I'm done. I can't do much more until the full game is released but there's something here so iron out the deletion um iron out maybe some of the inefficiencies in time um and, and how long it takes to build things and also as well when you're wanting to build something and yes you can rotate the structure but you can't zoom in and out whilst you're in building mode which really annoys me um, i thought it might be shift or control uh, i looked in the control section but you can't do it i don't think um but you can't zoom out when you're building something. So you can't get a perspective on where you're building it. So that is uh, quite frustrating and you can't build more than one thing at a time. So you place one house down. Once you place it, you can't hold any button to allow you to have duplicate um, entries of buildings. So yeah, definitely a few things, but I think on some levels it does work and with some fine tuning, it will be a good game. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it and I'm gonna wish the developers uh, sincere good luck on this and uh, keep going um, so we'll see where it ends up and it could end up being an excellent game anyway thanks for watching take care see you in the next one bye bye